Welcome. I'd like to share with you a little curiosity about counting numbers. Take any old sequence of counting numbers, as long as it doesn't decrease, it can repeat entries but as long as it generally increases, and do the following. So here's a random sequence I just wrote down, it's got nothing special going to it, just some non-decreasing sequence of counting numbers. And let's compute its frequency sequence. That is, I'm going to ask how many of these entries are smaller than 1? Well, none are smaller than 1. How many entries are smaller than 2? Just the first entry is smaller than 2, so the, just one entry is smaller than 2. How many entries are smaller than 3? It uh, looks like the first four entries are smaller than 3. How many are smaller than 4? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 entries are smaller than 4. How many are smaller than 5? Again, it's 6. How many are smaller than 6? Still the first 6 entries are smaller than 6. How many are smaller than 7? OK, the first 7 entries are now smaller than 7. How many entries are smaller than 8? Well, it's all these... 7 plus another 4. There's 11 entries are smaller than 8. 11 entries are smaller than 9. 12 entries are smaller than 10. Uh, 12 entries are smaller than 11. And it looks like 14 entries are smaller than um, 12, and so on, and go on. That's its frequency sequence. Now comes something fun. Let's take the frequency sequence of the frequency sequence. How many entries in blue are smaller than 1? Just the first one, 1. How many entries are smaller than 2? The first 2. How many are smaller than 3? The first 2. How many are smaller than 4? The first two. How many are smaller than five? The first three. How many are smaller than six? Still the first three. How many are smaller than seven? Up, oh, they're up to six entries are smaller than seven. One, two, three, four. Yep. How many entries are smaller than eight? Ah, now we've got an extra one. So the first seven entries are smaller than eight. How many are smaller than nine? Still the first seven. How many are smaller than ten? Still the first seven. How many are smaller than eleven? Still the first seven. How many are smaller than um? What about to twelve? Up, oh, now up to nine entries are smaller than twelve. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's it. 9 entries, smaller than 12, and so on. And look what we've got. The frequency sequence of the frequency sequence seems to be back to the original sequence. That's our first mysterious property. Our second one is the following. I'm going to write above our original sequence the actual counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'm going to add them. I'm going to add the purple and the red together. So let me go back to purple where it, where it is. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 plus 2 is 5. One, uh, 4 plus 2 is 6. 5 plus 3 is 8. 6 plus 3 is 9. 7 plus 3 is 13. 15, 16, and so on. And I'll do the same thing for the blues. The uh, counting numbers in red plus the blues. 1 plus 0 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. 4 plus 6 is 10. 5 plus 6 is 11. 6 plus 6 is 12. 14, and so on. And there I have the two summation formulas. So I took the uh, purple numbers and added n to every one, the counting numbers, the nth counting number, and I added n to each of the frequency sequence. And look what happens. Amongst the two sequences as a result, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And if you check this out, you'll find that every counting number does appear, and it appears exactly once in one of the two sequences. So here's the two mysteries. Begin with any old sequence you like, take its frequency sequence, and take the frequency sequence of the frequency sequence you're back to the beginning again, or take any sequence you like, take its frequency sequence, and then add the counting numbers, and you get all the, the position of the number, and you'll get all the counting numbers appearing amongst the two sequences. Very mysterious. Well, one can wade one's way through this and, and just sort of mess around with it, but there's a very lovely geometric interpretation that makes kind of this all kind of obvious. I have to say kind of because it takes a little while to see why it's obvious, which is typical of mathematics. So what I'm going to do here, the trick is to take your beginning sequence, whoops, where's my pen, and see if you can encode it in a diagram. And given the title of this talk, my diagrams consist of dots and dashes. And what I'm going to say, show you is just here's a diagram with some dots, and I'll just draw it, um, da, 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 something like this. Da, 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 da. I claim what I'm drawing right now is a code for the purple sequence, and so on. So if I call the purple sequence little pn and the frequency sequence qn, um, I claim this is a code for pn, where pn is going to be the number of dots to the left of the nth dash. So let's maybe just change pen color to make this a little easier. So P1 means the number of dots to the left of the first dash. Here's the first dash. It's got one dot to its left. P2 is the number of dots to the left of the second dash. It's two of them. P3 is the number of dots to the left of the third dash. It's also two dots to the left. P4 is the number of dots to the left of the fourth dash. It's also two. P5 is the number of dots to the left of the fifth dash. And that's three. 
And if I've done this correctly, you can see that this is a lovely code for the sequence in purple. Well, let's now look at what the frequency sequence is. Uh, I guess I'm running out of space. By definition, QN, oops, pen please, QN, which I've called this guy in blue, well, why not doing it in blue, let's do it in blue, is the number of entries PK that are less than N. All right, now I'm just going to actually try to wade my way through that a little bit. So the number of entries PK less than N, that is, it's the number of Ks such that the Kth dash has less than N dots to its left. Because PK is the number of dots left of the Kth dash. So I want to know how many dots have N, how many dashes have less than N dots to the left. Well, that is just the number of dashes to the left of the nth dot. I want to know how many dashes have less than n dots to their left. Well, these dashes better be just to the left of the nth dot. So I'm really counting the number of dashes to the left of the nth dot. That is, qn is, I'm going to write this out again, number of the dashes left of nth dot. Well, here goes. Beautiful. My original sequence is encoded as the number of dots to the left of the nth dash, and my frequency sequence is the number of dashes to the left of the nth dot. And I can check this. Q1. Here's the first dot. It has no dashes to its left. Q2 is the number of dashes to the left of the second dot. Q3 is the number of dashes to the left of the third dot. Q4 is the number of dashes to the left of the fourth dot. Six, I believe it is, yeah. And it's really doing the right thing. But the most beautiful thing of all is that notice that the frequency sequence, all it does is interchange the words dashes and dots. So, if the original sequence is the number of dots to the left of the nth dash, the frequency changes the words dash for dot, dot for dash, then the frequency sequence of the frequency sequence is just going to interchange those words back again, in which case that final, se the frequency of the frequency sequence must be back to the original diagram, back to the original sequence. Now, to explain this final business, whew, this is very messy. Uh, here goes. I need to make some more space here. Maybe this is not the best of videos. It seems to be pretty messy. Sorry about this. Uh, here goes. Let me write the counting numbers above my dots and dashes diagram. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and so on. And look where the dots are. The dots are under the numbers 1, 3, 7, 10, 11, uh, 12, and the dashes are up, up under the numbers 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 13, four, da, da, da. It is obvious that what I'm going to get here is all the counting numbers split amongst two sequences, just like what happened before. In fact, I claim that Pn plus n is precisely the positions of the dashes. And I claim that QN plus N, what I did in the second sequence here, is the position of the dots. If I can establish that, then it's obvious that adding the counting numbers to the two sequences sp splits them in this clever way. Well, why would, why would I get this? Well, if I look at uh, where is the nth dot? So, let's, I know, let's, let's, look, let's look at the fourth dot, just to see if we can make this clear. Here's the fourth dot. The fourth dot is basically, well, hmm. the fourth dot has how many dashes to its left? It has Q4 dashes to its left. And it also involves four dots. So therefore, the fourth dot must be in this position. Position 10, it turns out. Uh, where is the fourth dash? Well, here it is. If I think about it, by definition, the fourth dash has P4 dots to its left, because P4 is by definition the number of dots to the left of the fourth dash, and it involves four dashes. So I've got two dots and four dashes. I must be in position P4 plus four. That is position six. This is position 10. So in general, that is going to be the position of the nth dash. I've got this many dots, this many dashes. That puts me in the nth position. Uh, it puts me in position number for that nth dash. 
I've got this many dashes, this many dots, I must be in position that position along the sequence of counting numbers. Bingo, that's the end of the story. Though I would advise, see if you can use this technique to find, I mean, here's the sequence of the counting numbers. Uh, here's the sequence of the non, uh, what am I saying, square numbers. Here's the sequence of the non-square numbers, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, da, da, da. We know a formula for those guys. I bet if you did a diagram of dots and dashes for the square numbers and the non-square numbers, you could find a formula for the nth non-square number. A little bit tricky, but it's fun. Thanks very much.